Fighting fit as rice, the rehab's gone really well over the last couple of weeks. Jeez, it's probably been maybe 10, 11 weeks at this stage. Um, and back playing a bit of ball, so just in terms of getting match fitness up and everything now, we don't really want to put a definitive end date on it. It's kind of like the as you go through each game of the championship, you kind of take it week by week and game by game. Now, you're one of the elder statesmen, I suppose, in the Dublin dressing room by now. Preparation for games over the years, do you see, has it changed at all over the last few years com com comparing to when you first began to say this year, 2018? Yeah, it's completely, it's completely revolutionised even in the short space of time that I've been playing. So, I first started playing in 2009, so nine years ago now this year, and uh, if you look at what we were doing in 2009 versus what we're doing now in the run-up to games, it's... It's, it's worlds apart uh, the, the science uh, in terms of you know your, your training loads and your nutrition and your everything around that um, your, your training drills and, and how you train smart that was completely alien to us back in 2009 whereas now it's it's, it's a staple of our, our preparation going into game so big changes when you're preparing for a particular game, we'll use Kerry as an example, um, yeah. and you know you might be marking a certain individual. Over the years, has that tr changed from going out and playing to now maybe watching videos, doing some analysis? Do you maybe go into your own head a little bit and think, how am I going to react to this? Do you do some imagery? What's the preparation like now? Yeah, there is. There's all those tools available to you. Um, <coughs> and I guess I always have to be mindful that Gaelic football and hurling Gaelic sports, it's it's a very chaotic game it's a very random game there's only so much planning you can do and sometimes there's a danger of actually over analyzing things so paralysis by analysis that's uh -huh. a phrase i've heard a lot of the times and you say you've fallen victim to it yourself what happened to you when that happened you just get over consumed by um by the opposition and, and i guess when you're when you're a younger player and i remember there was a couple like one or two games and when, when i was first starting out that you get just so obsessed about preparing to the nth degree for the game and focusing on the opposition that you almost forget about your own game uh, and that nervous energy that conjures up around doing all that stuff that, that can that can take away from from your energy going into a game as well and you can feel a little bit flat going into the game so unfortunately it's one of those ones like you're trying to do the right thing you're trying to tick all the boxes and prepare to the, the best of your abilities same time you can overdo it as well you can overcook it or like this, i've sat in so many team meetings and flipboard charts and you know you've heard all these things before and you've heard all these things about you knowing the last five minutes of the game keep our composure and if we're down by three points you don't lose the head and we just keep doing what we but when you actually face with trying to do that out in the pitch it's completely different and if you haven't gone through that and experienced being in that situation a couple of times it's very hard to to respond in the right way so just learning uh, by doing is the most important thing. Uh, learning by sitting in a in a room and um, you know someone else telling you or going through it on flip charts and stuff. Um, you know it's just not as effective. Learning by doing is one thing. You've been sidelined by injury. Yeah. When everyone else is training, you're obviously still involved in the team. It must make it slightly different for you, though. Maybe is it a little bit more challenging to stay involved? Yeah, like it, like you're going to training sessions and you're training program is tailored so obviously t to the rest of the lads so you're a little bit um, outside the group and you're that way for a number of weeks um, and it's just part and parcel of the game you know injuries are unfortunately a pretty common facet of the game these days and, and you talk to any player and they've had their fair share of injuries and it's it's not a nice place to be um, you know when when it's something that you feel so part of but on the game day you're going along and you're sitting in the stands looking out watching it it's just it's not a nice thing to do but at the same time it is a bit of a reality check as well if you just take a positive out of it it makes you realize what a privileged position you're in to be playing football in the first place once you get the all clear and you're back the week of a game what's your preparation like in the run-up to it i assume that's evolved as well over the years yeah the week of the game it's usually training wise it's usually tapered down a little bit so um you know, it'll be interesting this year to see see it. You know that already the Leinster Championship is, is condensed, and and um, you know later on in the season as well, it's a more condensed campaign. So, depending on how we fare over the next couple of games, um, you know, th there's going to be more games than we've we've been used to in, in previous years. So our preparation is going to be different. Um, you know, recovery is going to be very important, and in the week of the game, recovery be a very important thing for me, especially. The mental aspect is probably something as you get older, more experienced 
probably a bit easier to handle, I'm guessing, because you've got more experience and you know what, what to expect, I suppose. The mental aspect, is that an aspect that you're bringing in more and more into your preparation? Yeah, I guess um, unconsciously you're probably, yeah, you are. Um, again, that, that nerve, you can overthink things and... Um, Certainly, starting out, I would have, I would have been, I would have fallen victim to, to doing that. Um, on the on the bus into games, I remember I used to just keep my head down because as I had the headphones on, I just want to stay focused. Guns, just now, I'm, you know, it, it's such a great scene when you're driving down along Jones's Road or outside Gaffney's there, um, all the the fans out in the streets and something to to take in and enjoy. So now I'm trying to embrace the situation and, and enjoy it, and that's just something that with age and experience that you kind of uh, realize that these are pretty special places to be.